Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today is Nashville Democratic Congressman Jim Cooper. Uh, Congressman, another sign that uh, uh, something that was very unusual that happened in Washington the day, all the national security and intelligence people were together before the House, before one of the committees in Congress, and they basically all had something to say that was completely the opposite of what the President has said about his policies regarding Syria, Iraq, Iran, North Korea, ISIS, and Al Qaeda, and just about any other policy area that came up. That is completely unprecedented. We see a lot of things in Washington are unprecedented. This is completely unprecedented. This has never happened. You're totally right, Pat. The five key intelligence agencies, CIA, NSA, and these are folks appointed by Trump. They his people, all, they, they were not, not holdovers, not deep state people left over from another administration. Exactly, his people, and they not only contradicted him, the president then turned around and said they all needed to go back to school, and he completely misinterpreted what they'd said. And this was open testimony, national television, anybody could watch it with their own eyes, hear it with their own ears. Sometimes the president doesn't seem to be part of his own administration. It is really a curious thing. Uh, you're chair of the Strategic Forces Subcommittee of the House Armed Services Committee. You're now chairman of that, not just a ranking member. Uh, among you, the duties of that subcommittee are oversight of the national intelligence programs and the Department of Energy's national security programs. Uh, given this disconnect between the president and his officials in those areas, are you going to do some oversight panels to find out just what the heck's going on and how to get it, everybody on the same page? Well, we have very heavy responsibilities. Nothing is more serious than nuclear weapons. We also have satellite jurisdiction. And here in Tennessee, it means we have jurisdiction over things like Oak Ridge. We've got to make sure everything is properly and safely handled. Uh, there have been issues in the past. We need to make sure that there aren't any now. And now we're seeing some policy issues. The president just announced a couple of days ago he's pulling out of a treaty that was signed by Ronald Reagan. And Ronald Reagan is one of the most highly regarded of all Republican presidents. For him to betray the Reagan legacy like that was a pretty scary thing. Does it also mean, because it looks like both the Russians and the Americans are walking away from that treaty, but is walking away from that meaning walking towards a new arms race, and this time China and some other countries may be involved, not just the U.S. and Russia? Well, the last thing the world needs is another arms race, but what happened was the Russians did cheat on that treaty. The Russians were at fault. So the question is what our response is. And you don't want to reward the Russians for having cheated, and I'm afraid us pulling out the treaty essentially gives them a pass. Instead of condemning them and getting the NATO to condemn them, the president just has said, oh, let's scrap the whole thing anyway. And that effectively gives Russia a pass. Another area I want to ask you about in terms of your oversight responsibilities, I recently read a Wall Street Journal article that indicated Russia now has a, a new radar system that seems to compromise our effectiveness, our stealth aircraft. Um, that would be, are we losing our advantage in that area? If our stealth aircraft don't work, we've got a, we got a problem. Well, the Russians have claimed a number of things. Remember, the whole Russian economy is no bigger than the economy of the state of New York. And they have a shrinking population, and alcohol addiction is prevalent in Russia. They have a big land area, so they look important on the map. And Putin has played a weak hand very well. But our real long-term adversary is China, because they have immense capability. They're many times larger than we are in population. And by some measures, they've already exceeded our economy in terms of total size. So that's the, the graver risk, because Russia will take care of itself over time. Putin so, won't live forever. So mm -hmm. what I'm hearing you say is you're not sure this, these reports about Russia having a radar that, that well, breaks down our stealth um, we, capabilities are not, may not be true? We know he lied in a previous press conference. He claimed that he had cruise missiles that can go all the way around the world and all sorts of things that are bizarre. Um, he seemed to be bragging mainly for the Russian people, mainly entertaining them. Uh, and. That seriously misled the world because from what we know, many of these capabilities the Russians simply do not have. Another area we pride ourselves in being the leaders of the world on has been space travel and space uh, exploration. Um, but the Chinese are seeing, they, they landed somebody on the backside of the moon, I believe. Uh, are you concerned? And I think that's another area that you'll be overseeing in, in another one of the committees, subcommittees that you're on, that you're going to have, we have a problem. We're losing our leadership in the area of space. We've allowed other nations to pretty much catch up, and um, the Chinese and others are amazingly advanced, and even lesser nations are launching tens, sometimes hundreds of satellites. So the uh, space above our heads when we look at twinkling stars at night, it's not all benign anymore. Some of this stuff is a little bit scary, and we've got to make sure that we're well ahead of any other nation. You serve on a, committee, a subcommittee called Emerging Threats and Capabilities Subcommittee. Are there areas where we're losing our other uh, our capabilities? Are there other threats out there we don't hear as much about in the news because we hear so much either about Russia and a little bit about China? 
Oh, there are areas that are um, great vulnerabilities for our country. We don't like to talk about them, but whether it's biological or chemical weapons, those are oftentimes much cheaper than nuclear weapons. Um, in general, our military is the finest in the world, but there are some areas in which we have relaxed a little bit too much and let others slip up on us. Are there things you can't talk about because you've received briefings you're not allowed to talk about? Most of it's public, and most of it is obvious. For example, our B-52 bombers, which are uh, 60, 70 years old right now, uh, we have failed to have a replacement bomber. And I love the old birds, but they're not going to last forever, and the current plan is for them to still be flying when they're almost 100 years old, and which is ridiculous. And the B-52s date back to World War II. Post-World War II, they're magnificent. Uh, we have some that are flying today, they're built in the 60s, far, far older than their pilots or their pilot's parents. Another mm -hmm. area that was talked about of concern about military readiness was in the it was in the naval area. There were se several situations about a year or so ago we had some of our ships colliding with each other, colliding with other ships. Are you, is that is that being addressed at this point? It's dropped out of the news. It's hard to tell exactly where we stand. Well some of our most advanced destroyers were hurt in Asian waters. Uh, it seemed to be um, a preventable error but errors like that shouldn't uh, ever occur. Many uh, seamen were killed. Uh, it was a terrible, terrible tragedy. And we're working now with the Navy to make sure that they train their folks better so that accidents like that simply don't occur. You've expressed your concern about our continuing to have leadership in space. We seem to be having more of an issue about whether or not we're gonna have Space Corps and it's gonna be a separate uh, military branch like the Army, Navy, or Marines rather than what we're going to do. Is that going to continue with this administration? They're going to want to do one thing and Congress is going to want to do something else? Well, the president took our idea, which was three or four years old, which was completely bipartisan. And he took it and pushed it too far and made it partisan. It's a shame because we thought you could improve our space capabilities within the Air Force. Uh, the president wants an entirely new service and is disrespecting the Air Force. Uh, he didn't need to do that, and he didn't need to make it a partisan issue. He even had a logo competition for the Republican National Committee to design a patch for the Space Force. That's ridiculous. This isn't a political campaign. This is a way for us to strengthen our space capability so our satellites are safe and everybody's satellites are safe. Congressman Jim Cooper is our guest on Inside Politics. Back for more questions with the Congressman after this break.